Hello, guys, and welcome back to the NW Sportscast, another Mariners postgame show. They fall 4-2 to the Kansas City Royals in the second game of this series. Tomorrow, we got the rubber match. But before that, what happened in this one, Levi? What happened was one bad pitch cost the Mariners the game. It's tough when that sort of thing happens, but there's some games that are close enough that one pitch does the difference. And in this case, it was one pitch to Nelson Velasquez. The Royals took advantage. Logan Gilbert pitched really well until the seventh inning, but a three-run home run really hit the Mariners hard in this one. Yeah, Logan Gilbert, he looked more than good up until that seventh inning, that one bad pitch. It's really, really unfortunate. But once again, when the pitching, you know, quote-unquote, lets down the Mariners, which it didn't at all. I mean, four runs is not the end of the world. The offense couldn't put it back together. Uh, you know, Mitch Hanniger obviously has that home run in the ninth, but really, other than that, there was missed opportunities all night long uh, and nothing really going for the offense. I'm not sure why that's so inconsistent. I mean, the Mariners, they look great, and then they look really poor. Yeah. And they look great. I mean, there's no middle ground, it seems like, with this team. Why is it so feast or famine for the Mariners right now, Levi? What do you see? Well, I, I think I think we honestly kind of overestimate how much this applies to only the Mariners. I think most teams could say that they are, you know, look, we scored eight runs, then we scored six, then we scored two. There's a good chance tomorrow we score eight again. Uh, there's also a good chance tomorrow. Why we can't we just score four? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think this applies to a lot of teams, though. I don't think the Mariners are the only team who is, you know, has one great game and then one bad game. But I will say this, Drew, the, the lineup, we do know it's inconsistent. You know, we've seen struggles before. We haven't seen Rojas struggle back to back games. And I believe he got a hit last night, but didn't do a whole lot. And then tonight going over three, that's kind of weird. But other than that, like this is kind of what I expect from the Mariners. Dylan Moore, a little bit inconsistent. Luis Urias, a little bit inconsistent. Luke Rayley, he hit the home run today, uh, as did Mitch Hanniger. But other than that, they didn't do much. Hanniger actually went three for three with a couple singles, but he wasn't able to score because Demo, Urias, and Haggerty went 0 for 10 in the bottom of the lineup. So it's like, it's tough when, when it's so inconsistent. But like, we've seen these guys be inconsistent all year, so it's not really a surprise <laughs> when I see it tonight. Yeah. The strikeouts tonight. We strike, but although who knows the strikeouts, even that, that big of a deal. Yeah. What really stands out to me is we out hit the Royal seven to five, but yeah. just, you know, like you said, Mitch Hanniger going three for three, obviously huge. The problem is the next three guys after that, obviously go over that almost pretty much eliminates whatever Mitch Hanniger does outside of the, the one run shot Hannah right. you know like he could get on base and it just simply doesn't matter because the three guys after him you know just can't do anything the middle of the lineup today really was uh you know the Mariners bread maker uh Julio goes two for four France goes one for four Kyle goes over but then Luke Rayleigh goes one for four Hannah goes three for three and the rest of the lineup goes over it's unfortunate that a guy like Rojas and a guy like Dylan Moore uh, couldn't kind of continue their hot, you know, their hot hitting because that could have been the difference in this one. And we could be looking at tomorrow's game and think this is a chance to sweep because if Logan Gilbert goes six, uh, six innings pitch, zero earned runs, you think that's a game the Mariners should probably win. It's unfortunate he obviously gives up the, the three run shot, but that still shouldn't be the end of the world. After seven innings, you know, three runs is not the worst thing at all. And the Mariners just couldn't find a way to really, uh, you know, get at the Royals. They would threaten and then they wouldn't be able to get that one hit or that one home run to really send the Royals packing. It's unfortunate. And tomorrow we will have uh, the rubber match and we'll see what team comes away with, uh, you know, the initial tiebreaker. Uh, one that should really matter down the line. Royals, another team that the Mariners could be fighting for a wild card spot when it comes September. Yeah, tomorrow's a big game. Um, and I'll get to that in a little bit, but I just want to 
touch a little bit more on today's game, uh, particularly with the injury news, because we did have uh, two guys tonight out of the lineup. Uh, kind of rare that you'd see Polanco and Garver both out of the lineup. I think this is the first game that they've both not been in. Um, Polanco apparently has had some hamstring tightness. Yeah. And according to Scott Service, he is going to be fine. He's not going to need to be on the IL, so that's good. Um, and then Garver was a late scratch today with back spasms, uh, which is the second time he's had those this season. Uh, coincidentally, I myself have also been having back spasms today. So I feel for oh. Mitch Garver uh, with, with the back spasms thing. But um, hope you're all right, Levi, you know. What's that? I said, hope you're all right. Oh, I'm doing I'm doing great, Drew. But uh, what's your take? Do you think uh, Garver, Polanco, both back in the lineup tomorrow? Yeah, you know, sure. I, I, I think they'll probably be back. But I think my – how do I want to put this? I think my attitude on Polanco and Garver is just so I don't care at this point. And that's so sad yeah. to say because those are two big acquisitions. And the yeah. fact that I'm sitting here in early May and I'm just kind of I don't really care about if Polanco and Garver get back. Like, sure, it would be nice to have them. But, like, I think that our chances of winning tomorrow's game is probably about the same with or without them. That's sad. I mean, it really is. I really want Canzone back. I'm I'm waiting for Canzone. I saw him today at the Rainiers game. I was like, all right, Canzone's coming back. And the fact that Garver and Polanco, I'm kind of just sitting here scratching my head being like, yeah, uh yeah polanco's great but you know the the dylan moore josh rojas thing kind of is working out or you know uh love mitch garver but hey mitch hander went three for three tonight so it doesn't really matter the fact that i am saying that is really an indictment on how they've performed up until this point this year and polanco and garver while i hope they get back and obviously there's some upside there and they've been great players in the past up until this point, they've been below average, and their injuries are unfortunate, but not the end of the world, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, to give them some credit, Garver uh, in the past week has an 832 OPS, so he's been good in the past week, but you got to hope that continues. And I'm, my fear is that the back spasms could be a bit of a momentum killer because last time he had back spasms was that first weekend of the seri- of the season, and then that next week after he had back spasms, I think he went like two for 24 or something like that. So that got kind of worries me because he was building momentum. Um, hopefully this time around, he does not lose that momentum. And then with Polanco as well, you know, let's give him some credit, Drew. Last year, Colton Wong had a 32 OPS plus. This year, guess what Jorge Polanco is at? Uh, 32. 73 so for wow. as bad as polanco's been he is still about 40 40 points better than yeah. colton, well, wong. colton wong was some type of that <laughs> colton wong was some i type could have of gone that. up there and i could have taken some ab's and heck i might have had you know an ops plus of what colton wong had and obviously i'm joking but he was that bad he where bad. we yeah. could have called someone up from you know the modesto nuts they could have probably done what Colton Wong did. They probably could have done better. Like Colton probably. No, you're, you're probably right. And you mentioned Canzone, and I am definitely excited for him to come back. Well, I, I'm a, I'm a huge Haggerty fan as a person, but as a player, it really hurts to watch. I mean, his Haggerty, I believe he is one for 15 this season uh, in five games. So he on base, because when he gets on base, he's a super electric player. He plays good right. outfields. He does everything but hit the ball. He like, doesn't, which we, we, don't, we don't have a spot on the roster for that. We don't at all. We don't at all. We need Canzone back. And also, I mean, Leo Rivas has played like three games all season. So getting JP back and Canzone back, we basically eliminate two guys who have done literally nothing. And we add in two guys who were both starting on opening day. So that should be huge, I think, for the lineup. But who knows? Yeah. Today, Canzone, I believe he went... One for four, but he was hitting the ball hard, you know, all day. Yeah. All four ABs, he put the he put the ball in play. It seemed like a hundred plus mile per hour exit below. Unfortunately, his first three ABs were all right at guys. His fourth, he 
uh, lined right over the second baseman's head for his only hit of the day. J.P. Crawford, he looked all right. Uh, he was definitely a little hesitant from what I could tell. You know, he was watching a lot of pitches. He had one hit, kind of took a, you know, a grounder in between the third baseman and shortstop to get his only hit of the day. And he was out of there by the seventh inning. I saw him, you know, he packed up, uh, changed his jersey and and left to his car in about the seventh inning. You know, I said, uh, I said, good luck, JP. See you later. So, you know, I did uh, did make contact with JP today. So that was, yeah, but they both looked good. Uh, They look like can zone seems almost ready to me. I think JP definitely needs a few more games to really get in the swing of things. But can zone should be back in time and he should really start to take some reps away from Mitch Hanniger, who obviously had a good game today. But I really like Canzone's upside, and I think he's going to be a good ball player for this club in the near future. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned JP leaving the game early. Almost makes me wonder: could he be headed back to Seattle tomorrow uh, for that day game? And then you know maybe he won't be playing tomorrow, but maybe uh, returning to the lineup on the road trip uh, when we when we start the road trip, I believe on Friday. Do you think that could be? But you're saying you think he needs more days based on how he looked. When I see he needs a couple more days, uh, he might have been leaving early because he lives in, you know, northern Seattle and it was in Tacoma. He maybe was trying to get back to his house a little bit early. Um, from my calculations, a few more ABs would be great for JP. Because the worst, the, the thing I don't want to see is he gets back to the majors with the Mariners, then goes 0 for 20. And now all of a sudden, you know, Crawford's a 600 OPS player right. who Dylan Moore is doing better than. I would rather JP kind of slowly get integrated back into the Rainiers and then move up to the Mariners when the time is right. Because like it or not, Dylan Moore is performing about as well as you could hope JP would. And obviously today he went over four, but before that demo was doing better than what JP was doing before Crawford's injury. Today, demo looked a little helpless at the plate here and there, but yeah. You gotta you gotta think that the upgrade from you know JP Crawford, who still might be a little hurt and, and not fully acclimated, I don't think that's an upgrade on Dylan Moore right now. Yeah, I mean the difference is JP theoretically is better defensively, although although JP was not great last year defensively, and Dylan Moore has been solid so far. But the, the real the real difference is Dylan Moore against against any right-handed pitcher who is good which, I mean, Michael Walker, to his credit, is a good right-handed pitcher. Dylan Moore is helpless against good right-handed pitching, which is why, you know, he's really only a 50% type of player. I, I've been really pushing the Dylan Moore hype train, but I have to admit, I mean, he, he's really good against lefties. He can hit against righties who are, like, average. He can hit against righties who are young. But if he faces a good right-handed pitcher, you don't want Dylan Moore in the lineup. And that's that's where JP is, you know, that's where that's where JP yeah, gives you a nice advantage. It's true. true. A few more things I want to touch on before we close this one out. Luke Rayleigh, another homer. Yeah, really. Uh, just the one hit tonight, but it's a home run. So Luke Rayleigh is really heating up, kind of turning into that ball player that we all thought his ceiling might have been. Those first few months with Tampa, he was on fire and then definitely cooled off after the All Star break. And really now looking like that guy in the first half of the year in 2023, how huge would it be Levi for Rayleigh to be that, you know, that cornerstone piece in right field for the rest of the year and be an 800 plus OPS guy, maybe even. At this point he should be, I I think right now I feel like Rayleigh should be playing almost similar to Moore. Every time you face a lefty, he should be in. And every time you face a righty who is at least competent, he should be in against a really tough righty. Maybe you sit really because he isn't as good against righties, but he should be pro- probably playing 60, 75, maybe even 80% of the time. And, you know, to his credit, as of yesterday, Luke Rayley now has a higher WRC plus than guess who? Machaniger. Well, he's had a higher WRC <laughs> than Haniger all season. No, he has yeah. surpassed Jose Caballero in WRC. Oh, so, all right. The one for all the one. people. For all the people who said we lost that trade, hold your horses. There may still be time for us to win that trade. Uh, they, they Obviously, they're very different players. They both serve a role. 
uh, to their team. But so far, it has not been a bad trade at all. Luke Rayleigh, he has proven himself that when Canzone is healthy, you cannot take away at-bats from this guy. Yeah, and Rayleigh, I know Mitch Haniger obviously had three hits tonight, but I don't see something that Rayleigh isn't better than Mitch at. I mean, he's better defensively, better on the base path. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he seems to be hitting the ball better. You know, obviously the leader aspect is something that Mitch Haniger has, but you don't need that leader aspect on the field. You can have it in the clubhouse, and it serves the exact same purpose. So I think Luke Rayleigh needs to be playing four or five times a week. Mitch Haniger should be stepping into that, you know, maybe three times a week type of role, and you kind of go from there. Does Haniger going three for three maybe change my opinion a little bit on him? I mean, not really. I feel like I kind of know what Mitch is. And yeah, he's going to have good nights. And and tonight was one of those. And that's good to see because he was cold. But Mitch Haniger, something a lot of people don't really bring up. He's streaky. He is. He's very streaky. He's up and down. I mean, he, he, he goes on heaters and then he cools off. Much like this offense, Mitch Haniger is also... Very much one day he's up, the next day he's down. One week he's up, the next week he falls off a cliff. So Haniger, maybe he's on. he'll start a little of a hot streak, but the problem is I know that'll cool off. And unfortunately, right. I think Rayleigh just provides more upside as of right now. Someone who doesn't provide any upside to me, Levi, is Luis Urias, who I want to you know mention before we get out of here. At what point do you start considering Urias might not be on this team pretty soon? I mean, he's 0 for 4 again. He's hitting, yeah. you know, under 180. I, I mean, I can get his baseball savant up, but I'm sure the numbers aren't good. I, I'll, I'll get it up while you you give me a, your quick opinion on it. Well, uh, to his credit again, Urias, he still is above 100 uh, WRC+. plus, So he is considered uh, by, you know, by, uh, by fan graphs. He's an above average hitter, which is crazy. Um, 161. Yeah, his batting average is not good, but his WRC plus is decent. Um, he does have 0.4 wins above replacement, so he's been, you know, better than a replacement guy. The question, though, with Urias is, A, is he worth taking at-bats away from Josh Rojas? Because Rojas is, you know, your, Obviously right not. Now, your best hitter. And B, if he's not going to be starting against lefties, which is what we have been doing. So let's say you decide Rojas is going to be the everyday third baseman. Then is it worth keeping Urias or is it worth maybe calling up Samad Taylor or Ryan Bliss or potentially uh, keeping Haggerty for, around for the speed element? Um, because Urias is not, you know, he's not going to steal. I mean, at least Haggerty, you have some speed, de- defensive versatility. Urias is basically third base only, and he doesn't have great speed. So that that becomes a question. I do think Urias is a better baseball player than Haggerty. The difference is, on the bench, who's going to contribute more? Is it going to be the guy with speed and defensive versatility, or is it going to be the guy who can pretty much only play third base? And, you know, I, but, but, but what you can rely on Urias for, if you need a home run against a lefty in the bullpen, you can always pinch hit Urias, and he gives you a chance. Haggerty, I don't think you can ever ask Haggerty to hit a home run. So that's where Urias still has that edge. I think he's better than Haggerty, but like that's not saying him anything. <laughs> it's not saying. But I mean, are, but then again, are you going to call up Ryan Bliss to sit on the bench? I don't know. I don't think you're at that point with him yet. I understand. I think if you call, if you when you when JP comes up, does does Urias still need to be here? Like so, what you're gonna keep Leo Rivas to do nothing on the bench? Rivas has higher upside than Urias right now. Oh, they Look. clearly they don't think so because they never give Rivas playing time. I don't know. I mean, it's tough. Drew, I want to ask you one more question. Uh, and I don't think you you were you were working at the Rainiers, right? So you didn't actually watch the game, I believe. But I I, I, I did. I was tuned in actually okay. for for quite so, a bit. So did you catch the the the? Well, I believe it was two at bats before the home run from Velasquez. And Rojas kind of bobbled a ground ball, which could have been a double play. So if he makes that play, we get out of the inning. I haven't said anything on it. I don't think it's a huge deal. But in Europe, I've seen a lot of fans saying that not Gilbert is responsible for the loss, but that Rojas is solely to blame for this loss. Who do you think Who do you think the, the blame should be on? Is it on Rojas for botching a double play? Or is it on Gilbert 
for allowing that home run with two outs and two on. Well, like, I think it's probably, you know, I can't say it's on Rojas. I mean, Gilbert threw the mistake pitch and that ended up costing right. the Mariners. It's unfortunate, and it's kind of, it goes back to the Rojas playing second base thing. He's a third baseman, and it's kind of the risk you take with playing Rojas at a middle infield spot. And it's a risk that clearly Scott Service was willing to take, and it was a risk that didn't really pay off tonight. Well, who else is going to play there? Yeah, well, if you're gonna if you're gonna put, yeah, because like Polanco's out. I mean, I guess yeah. you could put Haggerty there. Um, maybe you could put Haggerty there, but I guess Leo Rivas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I would say I would put it on Gilbert. But it definitely is unfortunate, and I don't yeah. think Rojas was credited for an error. It was but... not an error, but you know, at the same time, if he makes the play, we get out of that inning. We probably win. We probably do win the game. So it's tough. Yeah, and if Logan Gilbert doesn't throw that pitch, we also win the game. Right. If Logan, so Gilbert, maybe 50, didn't have 50. Any, if Logan Gilbert didn't have anyone on base to begin with, we win that game. Yeah. You know, so it's it's annoying, but it's baseball. Things like that happen all the time. And I can't – I'm not going to jump on Rojas, who's been so good. Like, that's, just a, that's not necessary right now. And I think fans who are doing that are, you know, in my opinion, like, yes, it's obviously super annoying, but it's also like – Rojas has been so good for us this year, so much better than anyone thought possible. Yeah, that this is the last thing I want to harp on Rojas for, and then he gets in his head, and you know he he turns into a below average baseball player all of a sudden because of one error that spirals into a you know a month bad uh, a month of bad starts. So yeah, it was bad, but I think I I'll put it on Logan Gilbert. Uh, he was the guy that threw the pitch. Yeah. I would agree. Um, but yeah, I, anything else to talk about, Drew? That's about does it. Huge game tomorrow. Huge. Huge game. Well, and it, especially because you got the Orioles and the Yankees on the road coming up. So it, when you're talking about huge games, if you win this last one against the against the Royals, you're feeling good going against Baltimore. You're four and two in your last six. If you lose this game against the Royals. Then all of a sudden, you're six and eight in your last 14. You're only two above 500. The Orioles and Yankees are both super hot. So it's like one game, it might not feel like much, but I think as a momentum swing, like if you lose this series, then it's like, man, we lost the Twins. We beat the A's, but it's the A's. And then we lose to the Royals. So then you almost feel like you're in a downturn. Whereas if you beat the Royals, you're feeling good back to back series wins. So I do think tomorrow is more important than we give him credit for. And my guess is we might see, well, we'll probably will see Garver out of the lineup again. We probably will see Cal getting a day off. So it's going to be Sebi. It's probably going to be Hanniger again at DH. Maybe again, Haggerty in left field would be, and probably we see actually Rojas in left and then Polanco hopefully back at second. So that's my guess um, on the lineup, but uh, it's going to be a big game. And Bryce Miller on the bump against, uh, who is, do you know who, we, who we're facing tomorrow, Drew? I'm checking no, right don't. now. I don't, but I do know tomorrow's the last home game for a little bit. That's another thing. Don't want to go on the road losing a, a series to the Royals. I guess it's actually so Brian Wu on the bump, not uh, not Bryce Miller, and we're facing Alec Marsh, who has a two point five three ERA. Uh, so that also means you know, and so Alec Marsh has had a really nice season to this point: three and 103 WHIP, two three four ERA. Brian Wu, though, as we know from his one start. He has yet to allow an earned run this season. He has also yet to make it out of the fifth inning healthy this season. So yeah, we were there. Crossed there. Yep. All right. That's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. This is the NW Sports Cast Mariners post game show. We're gonna be trying to do some more, you know, non post game show related content. I think, which uh, I mean, that's at least a goal of mine. So I think that'd be kind of cool. So stay tuned for some of that. And yeah, we have Maris posting from show every single day. So tune back and we should have a video out, you know, a couple hours after the game um, every single time. So if you're here, please leave a like, comment and subscribe it really does help us out. And as always, Levi, go Mariners. See you guys.